morning, everyone, and welcome to the thorough newspaper analysis for 7th May 2022. Today, we have the article Rules for Interstate Arrest, which has been taken from the Indian Express editorial and has been authored by Diptiman Tiwari, and it follows the interstate arrest of Tijendra Pal Singh Bagga from Delhi by the Punjab police. Following that, we will have the news update and the legal news, which you know are a part of Law Seekers Initiative to keep its students and readers updated with the current affairs that is happening in and around of India. Now, this gives you an extra edge in the competitive exams when you decide to sit further. So for today's first article, Rules of Interstate Arrest, this follows the media attention that the, dra that the drama of the Jindra Pal Singh Bhagda's arrest got. So what happened is Punjab police went forward, came to Delhi in order to arrest Tijendra Pal Singh Bagga, arrested him and were escorting him back to Punjab. Now, the Delhi police, when they came to know of it, they were not informed of such an arrest. And when they did come to know that Bagga had been arrested, they went forward and registered, registered an FIR that the Punjab police had kidnapped Bagga. So the Punjab police, based on this and a warrant that had been issued by a city court under the aegis of Delhi police, were detained by the Haryana police until the Delhi police reached there in the evening and escorted back yeah. Bagga to Delhi. So how to make interstate arrests is the question that now surfaces. So the police, as you know, is generally limited to the boundary of the state. In case where interstate arrests happen, it is generally the norm that police can get a warrant from competent court before making an arrest or they are to inform the local police for help. Now, interstate arrests have happened previously, and the practice is to inform the local police later, because whenever an interstate arrest is happening, it is almost always the opinion that somehow informing the local police will compromise the mission. So has Delhi police never went forward and done an interstate arrest? Yes, they have. In the case of Liaquat Shah, who was arrested in 2013 for his alleged connections to terror organizations. It was said that he was planning terror attacks with connection to Mujahideen. However, NIA investigation later took place to probe into the matter and it was found that the case was entirely false and that he had been harassed. So section 79 of the CRPC lays down the procedure for interstate arrest. Section 48 of CRPC also states that police can pursue a person anywhere in India as long as they have a warrant. But this is only what the statute has to say regarding whether a police can pursue a person. But what to do when they are pursuing a person is somehow not clarified upon. So the issue with this case is that the Punjab police did not have a warrant when they came to arrest Bagga. Now, Bagga had been previously issued five summons for making infuriating and defamatory statements against the Delhi chief minister, Arvind Kejriwal. So when he did not pay heed to the five summons that had been issued to him, the Punjab police took matters in their own hands and they went forward to arrest Pagga and escort him back to Punjab. So the apex court is aware that there lies a confusion regarding interstate arrests. And in order to clarify that, it held in the case of Sandeep Kumar versus the state government of NCT of Delhi. This case is a 2019 case where the apex court held that before the police goes forward with an interstate arrest, it has to do these three things. One, the police officer must seek permission from the superior either in phone call or in writing. Secondly, it has to record the reasons for such in writing and get an arrest warrant from the court unless it is an emergency. Thirdly, they have to establish contact with the local police station. Now, the, the police that are carrying out this interstate arrest may avoid this part where they establish contact with the local police station because it might be the case that intimating the local police might compromise the secrecy of this entire mission. However, it is then mandatory that if they have not informed the local police prior to the arrest, they inform the local police immediately after the arrest has taken place. For the news updates today, we have White House to get its first black president secretary. President Biden has named Kareem John Pierre as his new top spokesperson. The first time a black and openly gay person has held the role. Ms. Jean Pierre, 44, has served as the administration's principal deputy press secretary since Mr. Biden was elected. Secondly, we have the sad news of Sri Lankan president declaring emergency. This is a 
second time in five weeks that the Sri Lanka's president has declared a state of emergency and has given security forces sweeping powers as a nationwide strike by angry demonstrators cripples the country. The crippling debt to GDP ratio of Sri Lanka has now come down to an abysmal 110% and it is to again receive help from the IMF sometime this month. Thirdly, ISRO's unique goal for Venus mission. The aim of the mission is to study that Venus atmosphere, which is toxic and corrosive in nature as clouds of sulfuric gas cover the planet. The Indian Space Research Organization will send a spacecraft to orbit Venus to study what lies beneath its surface. ISRO is expecting to launch the mission by December 2024 with orbital maneuver planned for a year after that. For the fourth news today, we have WHO reports on COVID death in India. In a new report by World Health Organization, the Global Health Agency estimated that nearly 15 million people were killed either by coronavirus or its impact on health systems. For India, it pegged the amount at 4.7 million, 10 times higher than official COVID death toll. And this has created a situation of anger within the country. Uh, the Indian experts have claimed that this number is grossly miscalculated. And even if we do take into account the, you know, the number error in counting, because the center only published the data which had come from the states. And in the initial phases, the states had been suppressing some of the data. So based on that, there might be a 10 to 20% accounting error in the number of people who lost their lives to COVID, but pegging the number at 10 times higher is not something that is accurate. While who has said that it has done this on an estimate basis because the original data is not properly maintained by India and hence it has taken into some complex calculations and reached at this number. For the fifth news today, we have 12th Hockey India Senior Women National Championship. The 12th Hockey Indian Senior Women National Championship 2022 will begin in Bhopal. A total of 27 teams will vie for top honours in the 12-day tournament. The participating teams have been divided in eight pools. After eight days of pool matches, the quarterfinals will be played on May 14th, the semifinals will be held on May 16th, and the medal matches are scheduled for 17th May. For the legal news today, the first, we have a Mohammedan can't execute will for more than one-third of his share of the property that he has without the consent of all the legal heirs, holds Chhattisgarh High Court. The Chhattisgarh High Court has recently held that a Mohammedan could not dispose will of more than a third of his estate after payment of his funeral expenses and debt. And, this, and the same has been held in the case of Sulakshani and another versus Sattar Ali and others. Secondly, we have the power of the arbitral tribunal to award interest is discretionary and subject to an agreement between the parties. This has been held by the Supreme Court that the power of arbitral tribunal to award interest is only subject to a prior agreement between the parties and the same can be seen in the case of Delhi Airport Metro Express Private Limited versus Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. So this was all for today. For free study materials and TNA PDF slides, please join our Telegram channel by scanning this QR code given here. You can also follow us on our Instagram channels, namely lawseco.judiciary, lawseco clack prep, and ugcnet underscore lawseco. For any further information, please feel free to visit www.lawseco.com or comment on the YouTube video below. Thank you so much for having us.